Wow, I am feeling, I think what the dictionary would refer to as not great. Hi, everybody. What's up? And welcome back to Unhinged with Chris Clemens. I just realized that I had a pair of sunglasses on my head that have cat eyes on them, and I have literally no idea, one, when I put them on my head, and two, why they're on my head. It's fully 8.15 p.m., so I don't really know what my thought process was there, but honestly, they're kind of a vibe. I might keep them on. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm feeling body crazy, curvy, wavy. Anyways, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Unhinged. If you are new here, hi, and thanks for deciding <laughs> to put this on. Um, if you haven't, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. We have video episodes up on youtube.com slash at sign unhinged. So if you want to see what these cat glasses look like, girl, come on over. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited, guys. I know I mentioned this on my last podcast episode, but I'm coming to New York in Brooklyn on April 21st to record my very first stand-up special. It's going to be on my channel and we're having like four cameras, a partridge in a pear tree. It's going to be a whole fucking party. So I'll make sure that the tickets are linked down below. But yeah, I'm really excited for it. And the last show last month was so fun. And yeah, be there or don't. I don't care, but you should. It's a really fun time. Now, this episode is really kind of crazy because I planned nothing. That And... Actually, let me run it back, Turbo. I did plan stuff, and then I just got in my head. I was live on Patreon last night. Oh, my God. I just figured out how to do live streams through my Patreon. Oh, my God. It's so lit. If you want to join, patreon.com slash Chris Um, But I was live on my thing last night, and I was just, like, in my head. I've been really insecure lately. Like, I'm not even going to pretend like I'm not... And I get sort of nervous, not complaining, but like talking about negative stuff on my podcast because then people are like, I'm listening to this to escape. And I'm like, well, I'm recording this so I don't fucking jump off a bridge. <laughs> like, let's have some fucking respect and understanding, please. And maybe some decorum on the side. Now, I was on Patreon and I've just been feeling like insecure and I was like, what can I do to make this podcast better? Because I just feel like I really hit a stride and then I really fell off of it. And I want to talk about the negative shit I'm going through because I feel like being in this field of work, line of work, I, that sounds so official for what this is because I'm literally in my basement with like... 15 lights on me but I it's just hard because it's not like I work for a greater company or I am just one of a couple employees behind a product like I am the product and it's I found that doing this has become extremely challenging lately because I have sort of been hitting a low mentally and it's not that, like, I want to just make it my whole personality. Trust me, I want it to fucking disappear. I think it's the most annoying thing when depressed people just continuously talk about how depressed they are. And I know that because I am usually that person and I find that I'm being annoying. And so I just don't want my podcast to become that, like, one chunk of time we all know where I was just abysmally depressed. I don't even know if that's a word, abysmally, but did I use it in a sentence? Yes, I did, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah, I just have been like blah lately. I'm just stressed about life, my career. I'm like, what is <laughs> the purpose? And I know that that sounds like, oh, Chris, we're going here tonight. And it's not that we are going there, but it really... There's just something about life that's felt really hard lately. Just nothing in particular. It just feels like an underlying tone of just like we're all trying to walk through quicksand. It just... And I know some people will comment, oh, well, you're you're rich. How can you... First of all, you don't know what's in my fucking bank account, bitch. Okay, second of all... 
it doesn't matter your ec- socioeconomic status or place in this world. Everybody is entitled to have feelings and everybody is entitled to complain and everybody is entitled to live exactly how the fuck they want to live. Okay. And I know I'm taking us to church right now. <laughs> and I feel like there should be like a gospel choir, like about to pop off in like five, four, three, two, one. But I, oh, sorry. I, that really struck a chord. Someone commented, Oh my God, was that on my... Po- I think it was on my fucking TikTok I posted today. The new Beyonce album came out, which... Uh, I like can't even... I can't do a whole podcast episode about it because I'm like honestly nervous of <laughs> how insane I will look. But she has this song, Two Hands to Heaven. And it is just... Like that song, bitch, was I crying at my desk to it today? Yes. It just... It makes me feel like the little magic that I know life can be. I I don't know how to describe that song otherwise. But I made this little like nostalgic video of different clips and fun memories from my life. And I put it to the song. And I mean, it's (laughs) fucking flopped on TikTok, but I don't give a shit. And I made the caption, I am living in nostalgia because reality sucks or something. Or like reality doesn't feel good. And someone was like, you're rich, so who cares? And I was like, okay, like, first of all, no, I'm not. Like, yes, do have I bought a house? Yes. Like, I feel like I am making the least amount of money I have in years. And I mean, yes, I'm still doing well. But like, it doesn't fucking matter. Like, oh my God, it comes down to that. Like the fact that I'm even sitting here explaining this is like, it's just deranged. Go outside and touch one fucking blade of grass. I dare you. I dare you. Oh my God, you will feel relief in all little nooks and crannies of your sad body, okay? (sighs) I'm really coming in feeling hot. And I'm also feeling really fucking... Like, you know, when you eat something and you're like, what the fuck just happened to my body? That it wasn't gluten, but okay. So how do I really back this up to paint the full picture? This morning, Worm, my dog, my brand new one-year-old dog woke me up at four in the morning to go pee. And I was fucking livid. But then on like the trying to be positive twist, I'm like, okay, I'm glad that she like actually woke me up and like, communicated that she needs to go out. That's the dream. However, it's just so fucking annoying that I took her out at midnight and she waited till four in the morning. Anyways, I woke up uh, at 7.30 to her shitting. I'm sorry, not shitting. Diarrhea-ing in my shower. And you might be wondering, Chris, why in fact are you telling me this? I'm telling you this because I woke up to my dog having diarrhea. So I was like, okay. We are going to get you some white rice and we're going to try and fix this little problem. So the white rice came for dinner and um, I I didn't make it. I will fully own up to that. I ordered white rice from a Chinese restaurant. Amen, your honor. So I ordered rice and it came and there's this restaurant in Los Angeles called All Time and they have this like crispy rice dish where they have like vegetables and like crispy rice eggs and I don't know what else is on it, but it's fucking incredible. And I didn't remember I pre-ordered their book. I mean, I remembered I pre-ordered, but I, it feels like years since I pre-ordered their cookbook. And so, um, it came this week and I was so surprised by it. And, um, so I looked in there and every time I get a cookbook, I like take a thing of stickies And I look through the book and mark anything that I want to try that way. It's like if I'm wondering what to make or I'm in a rut, I can just pull out the cookbook and know that these are recipes that I'm down to try. And then if you hate it, you take it out. And then if you make it and you added some stuff, you can write on the post-it notes. So you have little notes. Anyways, (laughs) not me like in my fucking Martha Stewart era. Oh, okay. Sorry. This is like a crazy episode. This is why we should plan stuff. But... I got their cookbook and saw crispy, their like oven crispy rice. And I was like, oh my God, I'll make it with the leftover rice I have. And I basically didn't follow their instructions because they make it from scratch. I already had existing cooked rice. 
And so I just put it on some like some parchment paper on a tray, formed it into a square, and then put some water and olive oil on the top so it could get crispy. I put it in the oven at 350. It's cooking. I'm like, okay, this is taking far too long. I start to see that it starts to brown. And so I turn on the broiler. I'm only saying this because if there's any doctors <laughs> in the building, um, can you let me know if I really fucked up my body? So I put it then on broil. I bring, take it out because I'm like, you know what? There's some crisp enough. I'm down for this. So I put some truff hot sauce on it. And then I put some ketchup. And then I ate it. Which now that I say that in retrospect, yeah, no wonder I feel like I swallowed a liquid bowling ball. I mean, I feel like I am wrecked inside. Okay, and what I'm saying is it makes sense now that I ran it back, Turbo. <laughs> so yeah, not only am I worked up, but I feel like I swallowed just a magnesium bowling ball. I mean, I don't even know what that is. Those were just the two first words that came to my mind. Anyways, a complete subject change, but I went on a date last week. Um, now, I this is another part of where I struggle with the podcast because I want to talk about my life and these experiences, but I also, like, I don't like sh oversharing or even sharing at this point because every time you do, it's just ending... It ends up getting used against you or being used to spin you as somebody that you're not. And it just isn't enjoyable. I enjoy like keeping things private, but it's like, I do want to talk about my life, uh, but I don't want people to not go on dates with me because they're afraid I'll get on my podcast and talk about it. You know, like I don't need to share with the internet how my personal date went. I guess the thesis is like, I'm find writing that line of sharing and knowing what to talk about. I find it really difficult because I feel like I used to be so willing to overshare. And then it just didn't, it wasn't fun anymore. And I feel like I have really sort of been distancing myself from the internet, not for any particular reason, but because real life is just that much more enjoyable. I feel like I joined the internet when I was younger because I didn't find anybody who I felt like I resonated with on such a level. And there are people on the internet who are weird and had special interests and similar interests that nobody around me in real life had. And I feel like I got on the internet to escape real life. But now I am find myself like escaping the internet with real life. And I know that that's how it should be, but it's, it's just really nice. And I don't, I find it hard to like know when to talk about something, which is crazy because I've been doing this for like 11 and a half years. But yeah, I went on a date and I guess like what I have no problems talking about is like, oh my God, the fears that come along with going on dates. I have just been like really leaning in where I'm like, okay, if it sucks... You'd never have to see the person again. If it's truly awful, then you fucking talk about it, honey. But, oh my God, did we just find the boundary line? Okay, bitch, work. Who knew that this was going to be research hour? No, but I have just been like really saying yes to dates because like it can end at dinner. It can end at the end of dinner. It can end before it even starts, quite honestly. I don't know. It's just been really fun going on dates and meeting random people. Um, but going on dates comes with so many fears that I like forgot because it's been, I feel like a minute since I've been in the dating game. Like the fear of, I mean, first of all, them not even showing up. Then also the fear of them seeing you and being like, oh, you don't look like your pictures and then dipping. Not that I like face app or face tune or face f my pictures, but like, I don't know. Like, I know my angles. I know how to take a good picture. I don't think it reflects the full 360 of me in real life. So, like, the fear of just people leaving, the fear of, like, catching on fire in the middle of the table because you're reaching for, like, a fucking breadstick. <laughs> I mean, like, knowing my luck, that would happen to me. I would have to stop, drop, and roll after slip slopping up a fucking breadstick with some butter. It, it, <laughs> it just, there's so many fears. That come along with dating. Getting robbed? Are you kidding me? 
Do you know how many times that crosses my mind? If someone sleeps over, I'm like, what are the odds? I'm going to wake up and I will have nothing to my name. That's horrifying. None of those were my fear on this date that I went on last week. My biggest fear was that the date would lead to me having to eat and I have never eaten and I feel totally okay with that. And I do feel some slight pressure because like, I know that, you know, I am also as a people pleaser, want people to be happy. So it's like, if that's what they want, I want to be able to do that. However, I don't think I can give mouth to mouth with somebody's rectum, just to put it bluntly. I don't think I can resuscitate that orally. I just, that freaks me out. That is like putting your mouth at the bottom of a trash chute. Like, what? No, this is a, no, just no. It freaks me out. I don't even know how to eat like, Wait, are we about to learn? Let's all learn together. How to eat <laughs> Enter. This is like what comes up just like on the Google preview. Oh, and that's amazing. It's the website pureformen.com. And you'll know it's pure for men because this is like the article title. How to eat the booty like groceries. Um... Could we not disrespect groceries like that? Can do can we respect the sanctity of groceries? I mean, why do we have to bring groceries into this? Okay, so this is how Pure for Men would like to teach the public how to eat the peach. I'm just going to switch to peach just for algorithmic <laughs> reasons. I'm not going to try and get that word right. I'm algorithmic. Algum, al okay, here I am trying. Anyways, step one, tease the hole. Like, what? <laughs> like a coochie coochie coo with the finger? Or you're supposed to be like, you look like you have a bowl cut hole. Like, uh, there's a, okay, anyways, tease the hole. With what, my finger? Like, that's what I'm saying. Is like, am I already just sticking my mouth there? Because that is not happening. I mean, if someone cleaned it and, like, really made sure it was Clorox wiped, I would be maybe down. But, ugh, this makes me sound like a fucking virgin. Honestly, I really don't care. This makes me sound vanilla, is what it makes me sound like. And, like, yeah, you know what? Sometimes I'm vanilla. Other times I'm... A fucking rocky road Sunday. <laughs> Step two, spread those cheeks. Okay, so we're you you mean little hole, spread cheeks. Play with those cheeks too. Patty cake, patty cake, bakers. Okay, so we're you dirty little bowl cut. Spread and play. Clap, clap, clap. Press your tongue flat against the hole. <laughs> Absolutely not. And that's where you lost me, pure for men. That's where you lost me. Like, press your tongue ag against the hole? Okay, so we've gone like, coochie, coochie, coo, slap, slap, bongo, bongo. And then just, uh, okay, so like, uh, use your chin and nose. I mean, what are we doing the hokey pokey down here? So we're just, like, I mean, what? Switch up positions. Girl, let's stick with, let's try and get one position down. Why are we trying to complicate the dance routine? Tell them how good they taste. Well, no, because that would be lying because I am once again giving their whole mouth to mouth resuscitation. Show them how much you love doing it. Probably not because I'll probably be going half the time. <laughs> oh my God. The way that I now want to eat. <laughs> just to see if I would like gag. I don't can like have other people had this fear and then gotten past it. Like I and like ew, what if I make eye contact with a dingleberry? Are you kidding me? That is an immediate no fly list. I'm sorry. I sound like the most boring bitch in bed and you know what? If that's what this makes me, fine. I will wear it with a badge of honor. Your honor. <sighs> yeah, I just was, like, shocked. Let's actually... How to get over your fear of eating. 
Okay, and the top result is eating disorder hotlines for 24-7 crisis help. Okay, and then immediately right below it is Urban Dictionary with the search result rectophagophobia with... What did it call me? <laughs> um, okay, Urban Dictionary, we're going to have to have a talk. A fear of eating us. No, that I gathered, but how do I overcome rectophagophobia? <laughs> If you're a straight man and you don't eat ass, you are weak. Okay, but what happens if you're a bisexual man and you don't eat ass? Am I being a baby? Like, I'm down to, like, own that. Because if I am, then I am. And, again, I'm fine with that. Is it not as bad as I think it is? Like, I'm really down to learn. And I'm down to do better. (laughs) And I'm down to educate. (laughs) Oh my god, can you imagine next week I come back with just like an update and I'm like, guys, I ate I mean, don't don't expect it. Definitely subscribe to the podcast and see if that is what next week episode is, but no, I it won't be. Anyways, so that is like all I thought about on my date was like, am I gonna have to eat ass tonight? And I really don't want to. Oh my god, speaking of the date. I haven't really been drinking. Um, I feel like three weeks ago, I like really went hard. And it just like, it. you know when you have those moments where like you have been taking too much of stuff or you've just been like really being negligent with your body and like what you're putting in it. I just felt like I hit that point. And I was like, I don't want to drink. Like I... It adds weight. It, like, just, I don't enjoy waking up the next morning and being like, how big of a mess was I? There, Like, I don't know. It just, it really clicked with me. And so, besides a YouTube video that I filmed for my channel of me trying cocktails from Reddit and me on this date, those are the only two times I've drank in the last two weeks, which, okay, I know. Woohoo, Chris, you didn't drink. You've only drank twice in two weeks. Like, I know that that's not great, but, like, as someone who drank every day, yeah, I feel like that's fucking amazing. Um, And so this person's dating profile said, like, a good sign, or, like, you'll get a second date if, and then it was, like, if, like, you ask for if we get to a second bottle of wine or something like that. So I was like going into this date, like five days sober. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to drink on this, but I also don't want to be like weird about it, but I also like want it to go well. And so I want to get that second bottle, (laughs) which is crazy, which is psychotic. But I was like, I want this to be the sign of a good date. So we're getting two bottles. Um, Anyway, so I drank wine that night and I don't really regret it. Although the next day, I guess I did really regret it. And again, like that was like all the proof I needed where I was like, hell no. Hell no. And then the drinking video on my channel. I don't know why I decided to film a drinking video after not eating anything all day. And I figure I'll start it off with a vodka Soda. What? I'm about to drink five insanely strong cocktails. Why the hell would I have a vodka soda? Honey, I was shocked. I was floored. And then I was also drunk as the video started. (laughs) Like, that shit after not drinking for like literally a week and a half went straight to my fucking head. I thought I was on a different planet. Everything was hysterical. And like, honestly, it was a really enjoyable drink drunk. But then afterwards, I hated it because then you're just like in that purgatory of consciousness where you're like, is this real life? Am I a baby? Like, where am I? And like, who am I? I hate that feeling of like, I feel like I'm in between planes of existence. (laughs) So yeah, I haven't really been drinking and I kind of want to keep it up. I've been finding that I love just like the act of drinking, like having a nice glass in your hand and like having that fantasy. But like I've been putting like prebiotic sodas in them and like kombucha and seltzers, like actual seltzers, not like 
the Kylie Jenner sprinters. <laughs> um, and it's like really nice because you still get the fantasy, but you're not like totally fucking up your body. I don't know. I'm like kind of into it and I'm having a slight identity crisis because I feel like that's what so many people know me for, sadly, <laughs> is drinking. Wow, which is really fucking bleak now that I say that out loud. But I mean, like, it's definitely been something that's been a part of my channel for God knows how long. Alrighty, I'm gonna go take some sippies of my water, but here's a quick word from a sponsor. Now, before we carry on with the rest of the episode, I'd like to thank Stars for sponsoring this episode. The new Stars series, Mary and George, starring Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galadzine, tells a story almost too outrageous to be true, but shockingly it is. With next to nothing to her name and looking to elevate her social standing, Mary Villiers sets her handsome and charming son George on the path to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Trust me, you've never seen a mother and son duo like this before. This show is full of wit, scandal, action, and I'm sorry, did I mention Julianne Moore? Something this audacious and sexy is as genre bending as it gets. And trust me, you will not be able to look away. Be sure to watch Mary and George only on Stars and the Stars app. I'd also like to thank another sponsor because this episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. If you do not know, Squarespace is the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place all on your terms. There are so many advantages and reasons to be using Squarespace. First of all, you can drive sales and engage your audience with Squarespace email campaigns. This easily collects email subscribers on your site and builds connections and repeat business through regular email updates. I think it's amazing that this is a native feature on Squarespace and you don't have to go through some third party. Another amazing thing about Squarespace is that you can easily sell custom merch and create a passive income stream that engages your audience and scales your brand and you can design your products and production and inventory and shipping that's all handled for you, saving you time and money, which is so major. Even further than that, if you aren't doing custom merch, you're able to sell your products on an online store through Squarespace. So whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online, and it makes it just so simplified and easy for you to just start making that money, honey. Now, if you want to try out Squarespace for you or your brand or your business, you can get a free trial now at squarespace.com. But when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash unhinged to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Oh, just love Squarespace. Thanks for sponsoring this episode and let's get back to it. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. Anyways, welcome back to, <laughs> to the episode. Um, I uh, can't decide if I want to talk about this. This might end up getting cut, but... I have been like really struggling with being a dog dad of two. It is very different. And also the addition is just the absolute diametrical opposite of my first dog. So my first dog Booger is like the chillest girl ever. She is just truly down to sleep and let time pass. And I really fuck with that. <laughs> we really see each other on quite an eye to eye. My new dog, Worm, who I've had for January, February, February to March, March to April, three months. Oh, my God. It's only been three months. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, she is a puppy. Um, her birthday was in March. And she turned one. And it's just really hard. <laughs> it's really hard for a multitude of reasons. Yes, she obviously has so much energy, but like on top of that, I just forget that she, it's like having a factory reset dog. Like Booger knows how to sit and to lay down and what stay and come and go potty means, you know, but like Worm is definitely has made so much progress. Like I has made so much progress, but like I'm fucking wiped. I'm wiped. I feel so easily angered. I feel 
just like at the end of my rope constantly. And I've been thinking like, can I handle having worm? And is it like, should I rehome her? And it's been, unfortunately, a conversation I've really been having with myself a lot. And I say it just not because like I've even looked into it or considered it. Like I, I know for a fact she's not going anywhere. Like I can't do that personally i mean she loves me so much i love her so much she is so cuddly and she really just means the best but she is a puppy and that for me on top of getting an apartment in new york and going back and forth and it's just a fucking lot like everything just is (laughs) so difficult like she was going to the bathroom today. Yes, the same day that she diarrheaed in my shower, which I know it's great that she diarrheaed in my shower instead of on a carpet. Totally get that and hear that. I would love a world where I am not woken up at all to diarrhea. That feels like a fair compromise here. I don't feel like I'm asking for so much. So she's like having diarrhea and she ends up stepping through it and like putting her whole leg through it. And I'm just like, Oh my God, it's raining. I have Booger who's pulling on the leash, on a different leash. I have a poop bag that I'm trying to bag of Booger's behemoth poop. And I just, oh my God, I find myself feeling insane. And how could the question of, can I handle this? Should I rehome her? Not cross my mind, you know? That is one thing. I was talking to a friend. This is like a total tangent. but. Like, I feel like thinking things and actually standing behind something and believing something are two separate things. And I feel like in this age of technology and just constant communication, I feel like when someone is like, have you ever thought about X just in an inquisitive way or like just, oh, the other day I thought about this. And then people are like, that's what you spend your time thinking about? And it's like, no, but we as humans have like the most insane thoughts. And like to deny those because they're quote unquote like wrong is so wild to me. I don't even know how I got talking about this. I say as I move my little pen. (laughs) Oh God. Anyways, so yes, I have been thinking about Rehoming worm. I'm obviously not going to, but I just don't know how to stop thinking this, honestly. Like, I have really been trying to be so patient with her, like overly patient, knowing that she like needs that in order to develop. But it's just really hard. And I can't help but feel like, what the fuck did I get myself into when my life was so peaceful <laughs> with just Booger, you know? But I really do love Worm with my entire fucking being. Her and Booger are so getting so close and are bonding a ton. Like, Worm, there is not a day I wake up where Worm isn't like nestled against me. Like, she loves me so much, but she's just a baby, (laughs) you know? And that's really fucking hard. And like, the amount of times I've told my mom, like, I don't know how you did this with three humans. The amount of times I've told her that in the last month, especially, is insane. Because, like, I really do just have a whole new respect for my mom. And again, I'm talking about two motherfucking dogs. Huh? That's wild to me. That's wild. So, yeah, that is sadly what another big consuming part of my life has been, is just, like, really wondering if I can handle this. It just makes traveling harder, which again, I took all of this into account before. Um, But it obviously becomes less of a concept and very much more reality when it's really happening. And so, I don't know. It's just been... It's just been tough, like, honestly. And it's just a lot. And I am so tired. (laughs) I am so fucking tired. Okay, we are going to switch gears here now and we are going to get into some listener emails. I have been playing the Powerball lately because it, oh my God, the jackpot's at like $1.29 billion. And I'm like, oh my God, even if I just won a million, I would be stoked. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, I would be so happy. And so I've been playing the lottery. And also, there was this thing on TikTok where there was, like, a trend of, if I won the lottery, I wouldn't tell anyone. And then, like, you swipe pictures. And then it says, but there would be signs. And then there's, like, basically what you would do with your lottery winnings. And I posted this because I'm like, I'll get on the trend and I'm going to be funny about it. I posted a picture of me in the mirror. And I'm like, if I won the lottery, you would, I wouldn't tell anyone. And then the picture that was like, but there would be signs was somebody's YouTube video. I of like, it said goodbye internet was the title of it. So I, I went to like YouTube and searched like leaving YouTube. And I found this like goodbye internet. And I was like, that's so funny. So I screenshotted it. And that was the picture on that slide because like, oh my God, if I won the lottery, I would take off. <laughs> you would never see me again. You would never see me again for like at least a year. Or like, yeah. And then I would come back and just be the motherfucking c***iest vlogger there was. <laughs> I'd be like, Kim Air, I'll go and do air battleship with you. My jet will take down yours. I'll buy you, Kim. I'll buy you. <laughs> um, No. But yeah, everybody like jumped on my throat about me saying that. They're like, why don't you get a real job? Like, why don't you? Da -da -da? I'm like, why don't you fucking touch grass? Huh? Like you all are, you are all proving my point of why I would leave the internet because I can't fucking fart without bitches who have not touched a blade of grass in their life have something to say that because they need to project. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, so this inspired the prompt that I asked you guys in a previous episode to email unhinged with Chris Clemens at gmail.com of if you won the lottery, what would you spend your money on? Okay, the first email I see is titled, If I Win the Lottery, The Best Submission. <laughs> Obsessed. Hey, King, if I won the lottery, I'd fuck off to the Pacific Northwest, buy a rundown Victorian home in the middle of nowhere, and start a show on HGTV where I renovate it into a vintage maximalist paradise. I'd buy the sickest archival designer wardrobe, probably mostly Margiela. I'm talking tabbies in every shoe type and color, adopt a shit ton of cats, and I'd buy a hearse as my primary vehicle and pimp it out to be like pink and sparkly or something. And if I get board, I'd open and run a crystal shop. I'd do numbers out there with a crystal shop. Okay, love you. Bye. <laughs> okay, the subject line said, if I win the lottery, the best submission. And like, yeah, that was exactly why I asked this. Like, I want to hear y'all's fantasies. Like, that was everything. I'm going to keep that anonymous because you asked me to, but that was beautiful. I love that. Oh my God, the idea of buying a piece of shit house and totally remodeling it. <gasps> Having no budget. Oh, oh my God, I just got a semi and I'm not talking about a truck. Woo. Or a gun. <laughs> I'm talking about a different kind of pistol. <laughs> no, that was <laughs> insane for sure. Okay, we have one from the land of British, and that was them saying this, not me. The email is titled, What I Would Do If I Won the Lottery, dot, dot, dot. And I'm so intrigued by a dot, dot, dot. Ugh. I would make a giant treasure hunt for my close family, adults, and children, and that should last for a month, and their goal is to find me. Now hear me out. Split them into teams. Give them a set amount of money with the treasure map that has riddles, hints, and clues to where to go. Make sure they at least get to go to three different countries and spend a few days there. Within the countries, they have set tasks to do relating to that country, which should allow them to experience the culture, but also still have the race factor. <laughs> the end destination would be a holiday so they can relax before going back to their normal everyday life. But... There are prizes, parentheses money, for those who find me first and participation ones so that at the end, it's a win-win for all. My family has not been as privileged to travel and all that, and I would want them to experience it in a fun and surprising way. However, the only rule is no problematic family members. So sorry, mom, but you are not invited. Then with the remaining money, get my Nana her dream farmhouse so she can finally live in peace. Oh my God. I don't think I have ever heard a use of money been so perfect. The U.S. government, pay attention. This is how you spend money. 
no offense to the best submission person, but this is genuinely the best submission. Like, I'm so shook at y'all's creativity. This is such a good idea. And the way I would watch the fuck out of this. Oh my God. That is so good. <laughs> that is so good. Oh my God. And then are we going to talk about the whole like buy a farmhouse for my Nana so she can finally live in peace? Actually can't talk about it because I will literally start crying. That is oh, just so, so sweet. Oh my God. Who knew that y'all could be so wholesome? That this is really ugh, just so nice. Oh, here's someone coming in with a different angle on this question. My lottery ultra security process. Oh my gosh. My mom and I have a dream of winning the lottery all the time. We even agreed to a code word slash phrase to say to each other if one of us ever wins. I am also beyond petrified to ever live in a state where you legally have to announce who wins the lottery because I've seen more than enough lottery winners get stalked, robbed, or even killed for their money. I cannot even explain to you how much I have thought about this. One of the hills I will die on is that if I were to ever win the lottery, I am immediately jumping into action to protect myself and my money before I decide how to spend it. Here are the steps I would take. <gasps> I'm obsessed with this level of paranoia because, bitch, same. <laughs> same. One, going to Apple and buying a new iPhone with a new number for any communication having to do with future financial plans with my winnings. Two, meeting up in person with my lawyer before contacting anyone else to draw up NDAs for everyone I plan on telling, parentheses, immediate family, best friend, boyfriend, and financial advisor. Don't even care. I'm not risking anyone being a snitch and jeopardizing my life or money. Three, hiring a financial advisor so I can make this cash last as long as possible. Four, Telling my immediate family, best friend, and boyfriend the news individually and having them all sign NDAs. No, girl, we got that in number two. Number five, buy a reasonably sized home with lots of land so I can slowly add on to the house slash yard over time without building suspicion. Six, loading up the house with home security at every entry point and outdoor cameras on every corner, low-key making my home Fort Knox. Okay, as somebody who likes to make their house Fort Knox, same girl, I got up. After completing my safety measures, I'd like to adopt a few pups and give them a beautiful life, then buy an all-black G-Wagon with all the bells and whistles. I'd also buy out my cousin who is a private jet pilot and make him fly me anywhere, anytime, and buy my mom her dream house because she deserves the world. Please let me know your thoughts or if you have any questions. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question. No, I really am obsessed with this. See, like, this is when I would get, like, 18 dogs because then it's like okay i have someone fully take care of them and like make sure that and like they would be able to have a beautiful life oh my god we could have like a separate dog house on the property <gasps> oh now we're really cooking with steam here <laughs> I'm, I'm really locked in and laser focused i feel like i just took an adderall i would build a separate house on the land because i'd buy a fuck ton of land and there would be a, either an adjoining house or another house where all the dogs could live in. So each dog could like have a bedroom. There could be like bathrooms inside. Although if I have so much land, I guess they could just go outside. But then that way, none of my furniture is getting really dirty. And there can be like a spa in there and they can get washed and get their nails done. And then they could come in my house and like I could sleep in bed with different ones. Like, oh my God. Wow. Guys, what if we all just made a pact that if we won the lottery, we split it? Granted, if there's 500 people and we make 500 million, that's still like 1 million. I don't think that's like, I have 18 dogs and they all have their own home level. But like, listen, it's something. It's a million dollars none of us had. And that's a good point. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, okay, the person who sent this in, I don't know if you want me using your name. You didn't specify, but I just like to keep y'all anonymous in case. This is fucking genius. You are the smartest 24-year-old I've ever come in contact with. This is genius. I'm also going to favorite this because, like, 
you and I have very similar priorities. <laughs> you and I have crazy pri similar priorities. Okay, I think I'm going to end the episode on that note because what a fun note to end on. Um, how did we feel about this unplanned episode of just like rambling? Did we enjoy? Did we like? Did we hate? We hated? Oh, we hated. Got it. Okay. The producers are telling... <laughs> God, why am I so fucking annoying? Now, I'm going to go record the Unhinged After Show on patreon.com slash Chris Clemens. So be sure to come on over and watch. And yeah, we're going to go through some more of these and maybe talk some shit. Who knows? But love y'all. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, we have video episodes as well on YouTube. Just search Unhinged with Chris Clemens and they'll pop up. So subscribe. Please rate and review as it helps us out in such a major way and don't forget to get tickets to come to my very first ever stand-up special that's being filmed okay anyways i love you guys wow this felt like therapy today okay girls let's get information <laughs> okay bye <laughs> <laughs>